The three most common problems fixing a flat are getting the tire off, getting the tire back on, and fixing the problem that caused the flat tire in the first place. Today, you're going to master all three of those things. Also, stick around because I'm going to share with you two other super cheap things most people don't carry in their repair kit, but should. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel and slap the like button if you're feeling generous today. To begin, you're going to need a tire lever, a tube, and a pump. Step one is to get out of the road or the trail. Nothing slows you down more than getting your bike crushed by a car. Wheel removal is next. If you need to remove your rear wheel, shift the rear derailleur to the smallest cog. It's the one furthest away from the hub. This is going to make it easier to take off and put back on. Release the brake. For most bikes, that's on the brake itself. If you're using camp Campagnolo. 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 The release is on the lever. For bikes with disc brakes, you don't need to mess with the release. The rotor will slip right out. Common in bikes with disc brakes are through axles that require a hex wrench to release the wheel. Your wheel should slide right out of the frame or the fork. You can give the chain some extra slack to get the rear wheel off by pushing down here. Once you have removed your wheel, either make a friend hold your bike, or place it down on its left side. The derailleurs on the right side can be damaged by the weight of the bike. This is a naked wheel. What? Oh no! As you can see, there are hooks on the rim that grab onto the bead of the tire when the tube is inflated. Rims are very good at grabbing and holding onto the tire, which makes them difficult to pry off, and this is why you carry tire levers. And this is a good thing. You want your tire to stay on the rim so you don't die. Generally, the larger and wider the tire, the easier it is to get off a rim. Conversely, narrow tires, like the ones on most road bikes, are more difficult to remove. To remove the tire, begin by deflating any remaining air. Next, pinch the tire at a spot close to the rim. This will cause the bead of the tire to pull away from the hook of the rim. Now, use your first lever to pull a section of your tire over the rim. Start at the point furthest away from the valve. Then use your second lever to trace the inside of the rim to pull the rest of the tire's bead over the rim. To truly master the art of repairing a flat, you must understand the story leading up to your flat tire. Or you might find yourself changing a tube 10 minutes down the road. That story started years ago when you were a young child learning to ride a bike. Just kidding. We won't go that far back. The story could have started six months ago when water seeped into cracks in the road, then the temperature dropped, and as the water froze, it turned into ice and expanded and caused a pothole. There are two main causes for a flat, either a pinch or a puncture. A pinch flat is when your tube is pinched between the rim and something your wheel hits. It could be a rock or a pothole. The best way to avoid this is to check your air pressure every couple of days. You can identify a pinch flat easily because the tire will deflate quickly following some violent contact with the wheel. A quickly deflating tire also occurs when the tube is punctured by a large object, such as a nail or a large piece of glass. The most frustrating puncture usually accompanies a slow leak. A very small, sharp object can lodge itself in the tire and it will just barely pierce the tube causing a slow leak. If the object is small enough, it can hide in the rubber. Without the tension caused by the inflated tube, the rubber on the tire sucks the object inwards to hide from your touch. When this happens, you usually assume whatever caused the flat fell out of the tire, but shortly after you inflate a new tube, you feel the slow leak return. If your flat is caused by a puncture, take an extra minute to make sure you've removed the foreign object from the tire. You may need to remove the tire from the wheel entirely to find it. The next step is to replace the tube and get the tire back on. Remove the tube. Give the new tube a little air either by blowing into the valve or giving two or three pumps with a hand pump. A little air will help the tube find its place between the rim and the tire. If you have removed the tire completely, reattach one side onto the rim. Next, insert the tube valve into the rim hole and work the rest of the tube over the rim into the channel of the tire. I suggest starting around the valve and work around simultaneously in both directions. As you work the remaining side of the tire onto the rim, be sure to keep the tube inside the tire. We'll check for any tube seepage before we inflate. As you try to seat the tire on the last part of the rim, it can be difficult as it might seem like the tire is too small for the rim. I have a solution for this. First, pinch the tire on the opposite side of the wheel from where you're getting stuck. 
Continue pinching the tire to make sure it has not seated itself on the rim bead. As you pinch, pull the tire towards the direction of the unseated section. It's like getting a pair of tight pants or socks on. You want to work section by section to move the slack material around. You won't be able to see the rubber of the tire move, but it should give you just enough slack to get back over the rim. And that pop is the most satisfying sound. Check to make sure none of the tube is sticking out between the tire and the rim or it will burst. Now it's time for air. Pumps you can carry on a ride fall into two categories. Those inflated by hand or with a CO2 cartridge. CO2 pumps have two advantages. They are compact and much faster than a hand pump. The downside to CO2 pumps are plentiful. Once you're out of CO2, you're stuck, which is why I always carry two cartridges. These cartridges are filled with liquid CO2 that turns into gas when they are pierced. If you understand thermodynamics, you know that the conversion from liquid to gas requires energy, which is stolen from the metal cartridge in the form of heat. So the cartridge becomes frosty cold and can damage your skin. While the pump itself may be a little cheaper, replacing CO2 canisters can quickly add up, not to mention the additional waste created by the empties. Please note that CO2 cartridges come threaded or non-threaded, and the type of pump you have will dictate the cartridge you need. Threaded pumps are usually smaller, but a non-threaded pump will inherently have a casing that protects your hand from the cold when the CO2 is released. Lastly, even though carbon dioxide is a much larger molecule than the oxygen and nitrogen that primarily make up air, it's more soluble in rubber, so the rubber will deflate faster with CO2 versus regular air from a hand pump. It won't impact your ride home, but it's always a good idea to empty the CO2 from your tire and reinflate with a floor pump when you get home. The pros and cons of a hand pump are the inverse of a CO2 pump. Hand pumps are reusable, making them cheaper over time and a better bet if you're somewhere remote. That reliability comes with a small penalty in packability and a much longer fill time. Depending on the size of your tire, the size of your pump, and the air pressure you want, it can take anywhere from 100 to 200 pumps to refill a tire. There's one other pump option. It's a frame pump. I've never owned one, but I'm always super happy when I have a flat and somebody's there with one to loan me. They are much larger than the other two pumps, and you carry it by mounting it on the inside of your frame, hence the name frame pump. They don't fill as fast as a CO2 pump, but they take about a quarter of the time of a hand pump, and you should be able to inflate the tire to much higher pressure. Without a pressure gauge, you'll have to rely on feel. The skinnier the tire, the higher the pressure you'll need. For a road tire, try to get to the point where you can press on the tire without too deep of an indent forming. You're trying to avoid a pinch flat that can come with underinflation. Your front wheel should slide right back in place. For the rear wheel, place the underside of the chain on the smallest cog. Earlier, before you remove the wheel, you shift it to this cog. With light pressure, the wheel should push the rear derailleur back slightly and you can guide the axle into position. If you have a through axle, tighten it with a hex wrench. If you have a quick release, tighten the skewer enough where you need more than just a couple of fingers to close it, but not so tight that you're having to strain to close the lever. Be sure to re-engage your brakes if you have rim brakes. Also, it's a good idea to spin the wheel off the ground to make sure it clears the brake pads. If it's misaligned, you can open up the quick release and settle the axle back into the drops. Before we wrap up, I promised I'd share the last two super secret and wonderful items in my repair kit. These are optional, but together they are about $10, fit into a wallet, and weigh less than half a granola bar. My repair kit has a sticker style patch kit. This comes with six patches, which makes it like you're carrying six spare tubes. Patching a tube is super quick. You sand off the patch area, which removes the calcium carbonate added in the manufacturing process to keep the rubber from sticking to itself. Then you simply apply the patch like a sticker. The final item in the patch kit is a tire boot. It's pretty rare to have a large slice or a sidewall separate, but it's happened enough times to me or someone else that I tend to carry one. I know some people insist that you can use a dollar bill instead of a boot, but every time I've had a sidewall tear or a gash, a dollar bill just won't work. Most people don't carry one, so be the hero for them and carry one yourself. I've listed everything in my patch kit below in the description. Well, that's it for today. If you found this helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel, and if you're feeling generous, slap the like button. And I'll see you on the road.